Afternoon, Boris. I uh, can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Now I can hear you, yep. Sorry, it's always mute button. No worries. Okay, so how's it going? Everything okay? Yeah, pretty good. Yourself? Yeah, I mean, so, as everyone else is busy, so that's what explain. So I didn't uh, attend a couple of uh, previous uh, meetings. Uh, is there anything that we have to discuss or you can tell me? Uh, there's not really anything that's happened. I think um, two meetings ago, I, um, Noshnika from Signos joined. Uh, they were interested in learning about what Observe K8 was doing. And then I think two weeks ago, there wasn't anyone in the meeting. Uh, I see. So not much has happened. I made some, um, I did some cleanup with the Observe K8 issues and uh, kind of asked some questions in the Slack around people's preferences around like static site generators. So we can mm -hmm. start like building the static site for teaching people about observability, but uh, I've not had any response to that. So I was gonna ask you about that today as well, but um, Looks like it might just be the two of us today. <laughs> it's okay. Just uh, to let you know, so uh, I asked my people to work on some um, uh, um, uh, open telemetry collector uh, presentation how we use it in house. And okay. uh, I promised at some point uh, to, to connect with Henrik and provide this for his hotel people. So if you have uh, some. Uh, and also, there is a new journey for me. I don't know if it's important or not, but we are using Argo Flow. And it's appeared, so my, uh, many customers uh, start to ask about special custom metrics that would confirm so if their flow is working fine in terms of uh, latency for every execution, relations, and probably it never has been discussed in deep, no examples. And it seems it's a new one. So it's not just simple deploy a pod container, let it run. It's more right now to create relation between multiple uh, pods inside of the same namespace. They just uh, work um, in order to provide some additional information between them. People sometimes struggle. They don't have appropriate uh, capability to monitor success. So. Okay. And I couldn't see too much information outside of uh, Argo uh, itself. So it could be the case. I don't know. Tell me. Uh, yeah, to be honest, I don't know too much about that project. Um... It's a part of CNFC. So maybe it makes a sense to, to some degree to involve these people because it can be at some point, it's kind of a hot topic uh, for observability. In general, for Kubernetes, observability will describe what should be monitored, but not complex cases that come in when people start to use this. Uh, not just simple run and show, but when they have deep dependence between multiple parts. And the project you said was Argo? Argo Flow. Argo Flow. Yeah, just yeah, type I, with Argo Flow. I, I, I've played with uh argo cd a little bit but it's I a part it's a part of same with me same with me uh, but you see when people start to use simple for example they don't want to run but full time they're just using something argo flow as just as a cron okay it's simple uh, yeah. in this case you still can capture but uh, it seems argo flow major idea not as a cron but just a, a link um for example you start pod, pod a to run and when it's ended, it should send data to port B that start to work. And port A is going to die, and after it's going to port C, port C, and so on. And so it's just something what before they try to achieve by using Control M, all these monsters, you remember, when they have multiple jobs that should be run sequentially, used to, on big okay. Linux servers. So the issue is that it doesn't really provide a way to observe what's going on between those stages. Uh, I just uh, jump there, start to read this uh, stuff, and there is some recommendations, but except uh, this uh, official uh, CNFC site, I don't see too many entries, best practices, but it could be the case for Kubernetes in general. 
Yeah, I don't know. I know um, uh, probably 18 months ago now um, when I was looking at a um, essentially a processing pipeline to deploy to Kube, we, we looked at uh, Argo Flow and Tekton. And at the time, Argo Flow was still fairly new, so we weren't sure it could do what it was wanting to do. So we went with Tekton. Um, it, Tekton works in a similar kind of way. It's like each stage is a separate pod. That gets Same together. concept. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I don't think we had any issues observing what was going on there, but I could be wrong. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something that... At least I never made this uh, requirements before. When I just not simply have to monitor pod condition, resource consumptions or logs, but I also have to monitor relations, executions, success. It's slightly different. That's that's more. And uh, there is not too many good uh, documents outside. OK. Also, yeah, it's definitely worth um, raising, raising with the project um, if there's issues in being able to um, understand what it's doing and where it's at and monitoring it. Because um, if they haven't started to look at those things, they should certainly look at that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm just saying, uh, yeah, so it could be hot topic during the next couple of years. And besides, yeah. if so, we can invite somebody from these guys who would just uh, tell us who, how and what, it would be useful for everyone. So just uh, send them out, say, so this is group would like to expose this future would they mind and send everyone else and says this is a, one of the future potential uh, new um, functionalities, if you wish, and uh, better to be ready. And second, uh, let me ask you, for Kubernetes monitoring, I would expect you to use standard uh, native approach by Prometheus as myself, right? Uh, yeah, I tend to use Prometheus, yeah. So my question is because um, it's native and amusing mostly, but recently I met a couple of people who just insist on data doc monitoring for Kubernetes. And um, when I ask why, we're just moving out of price range. It's uh, another good topic, right? And we actually, as I know, data, uh, data doc is using um, lambdas to execute this uh, API calls, which is more expensive measure it, right? Mm -hmm. But they told me the presentation layer much better. It's dynamic. So you can jump and you can push button and it would lead you from the top of cluster to name node, to name space, to pod, to container, and up to container uh, attributes, such as YAML. And um, I already discussed this matter with Grafana folks, and they just try to achieve the same. But um, it would be good if you just can, uh, because uh, dynamic allocation of resources or in the proper resources is very important. Not just simple dashboard, but just a simple way to trace the problem from top, top to the bottom. Yeah, um, right now, I don't think most well, actually i don't think any um cncf projects have tackled the kind of ui piece of observability in terms of having a ui that can do that kind of uh drill down roll up um jump all over the place kind of thing there are certainly some open source projects trying to create those kind of things like uh, signals and um uh what was the other one observe cloud i think it is uh if i remember right um but that's definitely a much more difficult space for open source projects and also for the cncf because it's because every vendor has their own way of doing it so trying to standardize around that is going to be very difficult uh, absolutely true, but uh, I'm surprised. So in this case, when they're over 
or exceed the uh, open source um, because usually open source on the age of, and I know the Datadoc is well founded and they have brilliant developers, but usual story open source usually on the age and uh, uh, vendors try to reach uh, the same functionality levels. So I, I think um, that's the challenge is an open source project coming up with something that has a better value proposition than what the vendors do today. Um, if it did, then maybe some of those vendors would look to utilize it and then build upon it. Um, but my understanding is that's kind of where a lot of the, um, for want of a better term, like secret source and all their like, um, IP is in, is in the, how the UI gets things from the data and, uh, that would be something that wouldn't be probably wouldn't get a lot of vendor involvement if the CNCF was to do something in that regard. I don't know who would lead this one, but it's very important probably at some point just to make again best practice uh, inside of these organizations. This is how it's supposed to be done. So from this point, jump to this point. From this point, jump to this point. This is a general, I mean, so it can be different opinions, but how it should this uh, dynamic role should go, but after all collaboration it should be standard. So this is how you would uh, review trace events on Kubernetes, not trace logs, but trace events on Kubernetes, create trace IDs, relate, uh, relations, and hierarchy. This is standard and follow the standards any company would follow to build up. How are they going to use it? They're going to use Go, Python, or Java. I don't, it doesn't matter. But the important, this is a CNFC view yeah. relation, dependencies, and you understand. So it's another. Uh, if you can't uh, at least try to sync with these people from these two companies that you just uh, signal uh, and bring, and uh, let's at least start to talk and say maybe it's worth it. And uh, it would be standard. And after this, I can go back to Grafana people. I already raised this question and say, come on, this is a standard from open organizations. Everyone at some point is going to follow the standard because they are, they are looking on uh, your uh, initial requirements. They try to adjust themselves. Yeah, it, it might be an interesting, interesting discussion to have with people at KubeCon in like a month. Um when it's a bit easier because everyone's face to face. Um, yeah. Uh, let's do this one. If it's not uh, to to big to, to burden on your side, if you can find and then why this is on the email and say so when you think it can be scheduled. So at least we would discuss 30 minutes worth it. We would understand if it's okay. It's make a sense to continue or it's just we have to just let it go. Uh, yeah, I can certainly reach out to some folks and kind of get a feeling. Um, I don't know if it's going to go anywhere, but uh, I can certainly talk talk to people and see what they think. Possible. I mean, so it doesn't mean so it's going to restart. Yeah. I just let you about some uh, uh, shortcomings on my side that show me so it's possible uh, we can jump there. Yep. Cool. Okay. Thank you, sir. So cool. talk to you. Thanks mm -hmm. a lot, Boris. Have a good one. Bye-bye.